Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I am trying something a little bit different tonight. I am home from work, and I just wanted to try this solo RPG called Quill, and I thought that I would try it with you. So this is Quill, and it is a letter-writing role-playing game for a single player. So the idea of the game is that we are going to write a letter, and there are various things that we can do, and dice we can roll, to score points for the letter that we write. We're gonna get a little scenario that we're gonna write for. So I'm just gonna scroll through the rule book a little bit. We can see it together. This is free, by the way, on Drive-Thru RPG. You can pay what you want, which means that you could technically pay nothing. Um, I didn't pay anything for this, but I'm probably gonna go back and buy an expansion and pay for it, because I think this game is charming and I wanna support the designer. So let's keep going. So a forward, a thank you for our interest in Quill. What is Quill? Okay, so it's a role-playing game of letters for a single player, you. So basically what we're going to be doing is our aim is to impress our recipient into responding favorably to our letter. We will accomplish this through deft use of language and presentation, rolling dice to determine whether or not we succeed in using the right words, the best descriptors, and the most beautiful penmanship. So basically we're going to write a letter, we're going to roll some skill checks along the way, and we are going to score our letter at the end to see how well we did and what result our letter got. So what do we need to play? We are going to need three six-sided dice. So I have those. Uh, some paper to write on. We're just going to use Google Docs so that you guys can see it. My handwriting is embarrassing, just straight up terrible. So we are going to type definitely penmanship test fail. I already know that. And we got some scenarios, so I'm actually not going to use a scenario from the base game. I downloaded the Love Letter scenario book, and I just think that, that sounds hilarious. So I think that we should definitely write a love letter tonight. Okay, so Quill's setting is Quillia, a quasi-medieval land with some light fantasy elements. So basically, it's mostly our imagination in a pseudo-medieval world. Okay, I can get with that. And then we are going to create a character. So there are some characters on the next couple of pages, and we're just going to kind of flip through them and, and see what we like. After that, we get to pick a skill, and then we're going to pick a scenario from the back of the book. So let's look at the characters. Each of these characters is going to have three different stats, and those represent different things that they're able to do in terms of writing a letter. So one of their stats is penmanship, one is language, as in the quality of the language they're able to use, and the other is heart. So how do they embellish their writing to make it appealing? So here's just sort of a rundown of those things. So again, you know, penmanship, aesthetic style, language is eloquence, and heart is sheer emotion and effort you imbue in your letters. Uh, so Poor, average, and good is the number of dice you can roll for each skill. A five or a six is a success. So you have to roll high no matter what in order to be successful in your aims. So a poor skill is going to give you only one die. Average will give you two dice. And good is going to give us three. Coming down. So we have the monk. Ooh, the holiest of people. We're going to write a love letter, but I guess we could still do a monk. Um, their penmanship is good. Their language is average. Their heart is poor, so they spend a whole lot of time looking at manuscripts, but also they are have, they have a closer relationship to God than they do to other people, so their heart might be a little bit... It might be difficult for them to communicate with others. Okay. The knight. Ooh, the bastion of chivalry and romance. So their penmanship is average, their language is poor, and their heart is good. So basically they have issues with their eloquence, but they mean well and have decent handwriting. Okay. The poet is a master of language, able to create beauty with just a quill and parchment. So their penmanship is poor, their language is good, and their heart is average. So they are eloquent and they have decent heart, but their penmanship stinks. Am I a poet? All right, let's go down. The aristocrat. Ooh, I like her. She represents the most wealthy and privileged people in society. Uh, her penmanship is good, makes sense. Poor language, average heart. So spent too much time goofing around because I knew I wouldn't need anything in life if I'm this one. But I have decent enough penmanship and I'm a good person. We'll go with that. Ooh, the scholar. Great minds of the world. So their penmanship is average. Their language is good and their heart is poor. I guess all that focus on minutia affected their ability to be poetic. Ooh, it might be the scholar. That seems really hilarious compared with the love letter. It's so like good language, but not good emotion. That seems like a fun challenge for a love letter. I might go back to that. 
Ooh, the courtier. So, walking the halls of power, the courtier is a social butterfly who hopes to climb the ranks through flattery and intrigue. So, they can't write very well in terms of their penmanship, but they have decent language and good heart. They're good at convincing you of how wonderful they, wonderful they are so that you help them with things. Gaining trust. I like it. Okay, so we have to choose one of these characters. I'm going to go with the scholar. I'm going to go with my average penmanship, good language, and poor heart. Definitely. So let's look at them a little more closely. Okay, so we study subjects like mathematics, literature, botany, and geography. The halls of universities are packed with scho scholars, some of which teach while others study their discipline in the library. Scholars are well-educated, so their grasp of language is second to none. I can pretend that. Let's do it. So, okay, so we're, let's be a scholar, and we get to pick a skill. All right, so choose your skill. So skills can be used one time per scenario, and they can give you an advantage. So one of them is inspiration. So this basically helps you get a dice to a language test. Illumination gives you one die to a penmanship test, and then augmentation will give you one die to a heart test. So basically what they're doing is they're helping you balance out some of your issues. So let's say that because my weakest, ooh, do I want to just let my weakness be weak, or do I want to and like bulk something up that I'm already good at and increase its success there, or do I want to be balanced? Uh, let's go for balance. Let's say I'm getting augmentation. So I'm an emotive writer with the ability to describe a scene in such a way as to transport the reader with my language. I'm one of those pop scholars. All right, so I'll gain uh, plus one dice to a heart test. Let's do it. That way my heart tests aren't quite so bad. I get two dice for that instead of one. One time in the whole thing. All right, let's take augmentation. All right, and then let's look at the rules really quick. I'll talk you through it, and then let's try to play. So we're going to be a scholar with the augmentation ability. But basically, a game of Quill uh, involves us writing a letter. So we're actually going to write a letter. And we are going to write five paragraphs to achieve our goal in writing the letter. And in each paragraph, we're going to try to use one word from a bank of words for that scenario that's called the ink pot. And in the ink pot, we can either do based on our language test, the fancier version of a word or, um, you know, the, the less fancy version of a word. So sort of like the Robin Hood Minute Tights, you change your name to latrine. What was it before? So we'll have to roll to see whether we get to use latrine or the other word. We can also augment our words with flourishes. So those are the ones that you take for, if you do a heart test, you can add a flourish, which is like adding an adverb or an adjective to kind of bulk out the word that you're using. And what's really funny is you have to choose whether you're going to try to flourish before you take a language test. And if you succeed, then you get to add the flourish. But if you fail your language test and have to use the, the crappier version of a word, then it looks stupid with the flourish and you actually lose points in the game. And then after each paragraph, we have to make a penmanship test to check the presentation of our letter. In real life, that would be really bad for me, but I picked a character with slightly better penmanship. Thank goodness. So it is entirely up to us what we want to write in each paragraph. So as long as we're following the story, we can just do whatever we want, and we can use different words from the ink pot to try to create a different letter. All right, so every scenario is going to have a profile. It's going to have rules of correspondence, so anything special about it, and it'll have an ink pot. So this is what I was talking about before. The first word is called the inferior word, and the second is called the superior word. So we're going to be going for the superior words, but we'll see whether we succeed based on our die rolls. So we'll keep scrolling. All right, so there are three ways to score points in the game. So we can either use superior words from the ink pot, so each one of those is worth one point. Each successful penmanship test, when, so basically after every paragraph we have to take a penmanship test, that's worth one point. And if we flourish a superior word, we get two points. However, if we flourish an inferior word, then we lose a point. So it shows like an inelegance in our writing. So we will just be working through this paragraph by paragraph and see how we do. All right, so these are the love letters scenarios that we are going to try one of. I just think this looks so funny. I can't wait to try it. So it is... I love the look on this girl's face, too. This is hilarious. So we're going to pick a love letter scenario. I took a quick look through these. I think I know what we're going to do. But basically, Quill has the main scenarios from the base game, and then there's, like, little uh, expansions to give you new scenarios to try out. So this time we're going to write from the heart. Ooh, I'm not very good at that. That's what's going to be funny about it. 
All right, so the first one's called A Cruel Distance, and you're trying to flirt with someone who and get them to come live with you. You're trying to end your LDR. So one thing that's cool about this is this person's name is Aubrey, and all of the other names in the game are gender neutral as well. So you could be a person of any gender writing to a person of any gender and make the game work for you, which I think is a really cool touch. I like that a lot. So it leaves a lot of room for your imagination and who you want to be in the story and who you want your potential partner to be in the story. So I think the one that we should do, just because it's funny, and because we're a scholar, so I can definitely see a scholar messing this up, is making amends. So profile. We are corresponding with Emery Pendergast, an ex-lover who left us a month ago after deciding we weren't committed to the relationship. Ouch. We are writing to win back Emery and to explain that we've changed and are now more committed than ever. We need to persuade Emery that we both have a future and to give examples as to how our life is without his love. I'm going to make it a him. That's my preference. So, Emery, like some people are straightforward with their correspondence. You were, oh no, we're unable to use any skills. All right, so we'll just, we'll be skillless. I don't get that one heart augmentation. Emery didn't love me for that anyway. All right, so here's our ink pot. And as you can see, it's pairs of words. And one is definitely the inferior word, and the other is the superior. So face can turn into visage. Need can be yearn. Morning can be sunrise. Um, I'm really tickled by the difference, like, pie-eyed versus besotted. Pie-eyed just sounds particularly clunky. I really hope we don't get it. We should totally try and see what happens. That's hilarious. Uh, and then here are the consequences of how we could do in our letter. So when we score, we can come back and look at this and see how Emery responded to our attempts at rekindling our love. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up a Google Doc. Ooh. And then, here, let me see if I can get this right. All right, so let's minimize this window. Not minimize it, but just make it smaller. We'll put this over here so we can consult the rules. And then here is our letter. Let's make it nice and big. I already picked a ridiculous font. And we'll make the letter huge to make it easier for everybody to read. So we get to write five paragraphs, and we're trying to get Emery Pendergast to come back to us. So I have no idea how this is going to go. I've never just written on the fly in front of people like this before, but eh, I trust you. Totally. How about... And again, we're a scholar, so our penmanship test will be okay, our language test will be great, but heart... Whew, will, we be able, will we be able to flourish anything? I don't know. All right, so let's go with my dearest Emery. Hmm. It feels as though it has been forever since we last spoke, and I miss you terribly. All right, so let's go over the ink pot and see what's in there. All right, so ink pot. Let's pick a word. Uh, we could do f visage. We could go for yearn. That might be kind of good. Um, cried or wept. We could say that we were crying. Hmm. Let's go with let's go with cried versus wept. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a language test. And since I am the scholar, let's go back over here we can see that my language is good. So I'm gonna to get to roll three dice for language. Let's get rid of that, perfect. So I can roll three dice for language and we're gonna take a language test to see whether we're gonna to get to use cried or wept in this paragraph. So I'm gonna roll three dice and I'll just tell you the results. Uh-oh, so I rolled two fours and a one and that means that I failed the language test. Bummer. So it feels like it's been forever since we last spoke, and I miss you terribly. I have cried every night since you left. And I long for your return. Hmm... That's not enough to make a paragraph. We have to write a little bit more until we move on to the next paragraph. Obviously, it has to be a heart pouring out letter as hard as it is for my scholarly self. All right, so it feels like it's been forever since we last spoke, and I miss you terribly. I've cried every night since you left, and I long for your return. Hmm. 
on the fateful night when we argued, you said that my heart was not in our relationship. I am writing to tell you that this could not be further from the truth. I think that's a good paragraph. All right, we're gonna call it a paragraph. Now we're gonna take a penmanship test. So the penmanship test means I get to roll two dice because again, I'm a monk. So I'm currently at zero points. It's not looking good. Uh, so I'm a monk and that means, not a monk, I'm a scholar. Different, different, maybe. All right, so I'm a scholar and that means my penmanship is average. So I get to roll two dice trying for a five or six to get this penmanship test. So I'm gonna roll two dice. Oh, yes, yeah, so, so I got a two on one of the dice, but I got a six on the other one. So my penmanship was good. So that means I get one point. One point so far. Make a note of my one point. Okay, so now we're on to paragraph number two. Hmm. All right, let's look over at the ink pot and look at our words and kind of figure out what we're going to base it around. Okay, so I'm a scholar. I have to do something that's, like, going to fit that profile. Huh. Ooh, let's do something with stars and galaxies. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so for this second paragraph, we're just going to do a normal thing. We'll try for a flourish in the next paragraph because I want to do something silly. Uh, but first, let's set up the problem that we were having with Emery because we have to have done something. Let's, how about, I know that I have been engrossed in my studies, but they are a poor replacement for having you in my life. I regret the time I spent obsessively looking, let's say I'm an astronomer, through my telescope hunting for undiscovered planets. I don't know. We'll say that. When I should have been gazing at the... Are we going to use stars or galaxies, guys? Let's roll three dice and find out. Five! Oh, yes, I got a two, a three, and a five. At the galaxies in your eyes. Ooh! All right, so when I should have been gazing at the galaxies in your eyes. Um, let's see. Uh, how about I regret allowing scientific tomes to distract me when I should have been studying you. Ooh, ooh, that's either creepy or awesome. All right, so next paragraph. Oh, we have to take a penmanship test. So we just finished this paragraph. I get to roll two dice and let's see what I get. Oh, yes, I rolled a four and a five. Perfect. So I get, that's point number three. I'm at three points. Okay, but we still have to keep going. We have three paragraphs to go to impress this guy and get him to come back. Okay, next set of words. Let's do, oh, let's get in pie-eyed and besotted. Ooh, how about my greatest fear now is not that I will not advance scholarship during my lifetime, but that I will not get to spend that lifetime with you. Don't I sound contrite? So contrite. Um, it has been a month since we last spoke. Do you still think of me? Or are you... Ooh, okay, we gotta take a language test. We're gonna do pie-eyed versus besotted. And let's, let's try to flourish it. Let's try to flourish it. So if you're gonna try to flourish, you have to take the heart test before you take the language test. So once I decide to flourish, if I don't pass the language test, then I am stuck using the flourish with the inferior word. So we're gonna try for the flourish first. Ooh, okay, I rolled a six, which means that I have to use the flourish 
So if I fail this language test, then I'm totally screwed on this letter. All right, so let's roll all three dice and hope for the best, or the worst, as the case may be. Oh, no. Okay, that was bad. So I rolled a two, a one, and a four. So I get to use my flourish, but I don't get to use my nice word. So what that means is that I ultimately lose a point. No! So I'm back down to two points. And I have to use bad words. Like, words that don't work as well, not bad words. So, or are you entirely pie-eyed? I'll take entirely as my flourish. Entirely pie-eyed for another. Besotted with would have sounded so much better. I totally messed up my tone, y'all. Emery's never coming back now. All right, so do you still think of me? Or are you entirely pie-eyed for another? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that should be a question mark. Are you entirely pie-eyed for another? Uh, let's see. I now know that you are my true love. But have I lost you? Dot, I don't know. Have I? All right, it's time to take a penmanship test. Let's hope that goes better than that language test. That was really bad. Yes! Okay, I rolled a six and a three, so I'm going to get my point back. So I'm back up to three points. Ooh, we're going to have to have to do something about these points. It's not good. This is not good. I got two paragraphs left to win this dude over. Whew. Okay. All right, let's look at the ink pot and see what else we want to do. Hmm. Uh-uh-uh. All right, so we have, we can do face slash visage, need slash yearn, morning slash sunrise, been an idiot slash been a fool, sad slash devastated. Ooh, hell of eternal health. I'm going to use that next paragraph. I'm going to, I'm going to end with eternal hellfire. I like it. Okay. Um, let's go with, let's go with sad versus devastated. Or no. Let's go with the morning and sunrise and end on a message of hope. Let's see. Okay, so we'll, do, we'll try for morning or sunrise. It is my deepest hope that you still love me and that this fate... Oh, wait. It's my deepest hope that you still love me. And that this time apart is merely, I'm going to go safe this time, is merely the darkest moment before a beautiful, is it going to be morning or sunrise, guys? Let's uh, roll through guys and find out. Oh, no. I only got three, three, and two. Beautiful morning. Man, sunrise would have been so much better. <sighs> I'm never going to win Emery back. All right, so it's my deepest hope that you still love me and that this time apart is merely the darkest moment before a beautiful morning. Mm, I will be eagerly awaiting your response because you hold my heart Indeed, my very life in your hands. All right. Let's 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 leave it and we'll do a penmanship test. I don't want to keep you too long with my ridiculous writing. Okay, let's see if I pass the test. Yes. Okay, I rolled a three and a five. So that is, we're up to four points again. We've got to do a little bit better though. Ooh, Okay, so we only have one more paragraph to you. So we've only we've written one, two, three, four paragraphs. We have one more to win it, guys. We gotta win him over. We're gonna go for the flourish. We have to do it. Do we love this man or not? We're gonna have to get our scholarly selves to show some emotion. And we are one hundred percent going with hell slash eternal hellfire because that is hilarious, and we're definitely doing it. I know that I do not deserve you. Let's just go with that. I know that I do not deserve you. But I love you. And I cannot help 
but hope that I cannot help but hope Ooh, I've already said deepest hope mm. I cannot help asking whether what I have broken can be repaired I realize that I am seeking blissful seeking heavenly bliss when in truth I am deserving of we're gonna try to flourish it you guys we're gonna try to flourish the hellfire let's see I get to roll one die oh I rolled a five all right so we're gonna try for two points this could end up really backfiring on us y'all okay so what flourish would be good for hellfire um if it, especially, so it's going to be eternal hellfire if we get it. Ooh, I'm deserving of... Let's go with torturous eternal hellfire. Okay, so let's roll three dice. Come on, pass the test. Pass the... Yes! All right, I got a one, a three, and a five. All right, so I'm deserving of torturous eternal hellfire. And a two points. Ha ha ha. I'm up to six points. I don't know if it's going to be enough to give me much of anything, but we are trying. We are trying. All right. So I realize that I'm seeking heavenly bliss. When in truth, I'm deserving of torturous eternal hellfire. Indeed, it will be torturous enough to wonder what or indeed whether I will hear from you. Ooh. Alright, so let's do our penmanship test. We get to roll two dice. Come on. Oh, no. Okay, so we only got one and three. So we did not pass the penmanship test. We got six points. So indeed it will be torturous enough to wonder what or indeed whether I will hear from you. Um, yours always. Uh, let's name our scholar something cool. Um... Let's say that her name is Asby Blankenship. I have no idea. The third. Because we totally have women who are the third in this culture. It's my Quelia and I do what I want. Okay, so we had six points. So we made this amazing letter, though. All right, so let's see how we score on this letter. Let's check our score, y'all. So make this big. Oh no! Okay, so if we gotten less than five points, it would be Emery writes back, believing that you are worse than ever and that there is no hint of sincerity in your writing. You receive no further correspondence. Five to seven points. Emery's heart is softened by your words, but he cannot be with you. Emery is happy to be friends with you. He wants to be friends after a letter like that? Ouch, Emery. Come on. Come on. That's okay. Six points. It's what I deserve. All right, so eight to ten points. I receive a heartfelt letter from Emery admitting that I have changed and that we should both meet by the fountain on Monday evening to rekindle our love. Ooh, I gotta write this letter again see if I can get that result. Or eleven plus points. You receive no correspondence. Instead, a few days after sending, you receive a knock at your door. Emery stands there and you both embrace. You marry within the month. That's so cute. I love that these have these little consequences. So... This is sort of an unusual game. I really don't think that anybody would enjoy playing it unless they enjoy writing ridiculous letters, which, as it happens, I do enjoy. So this was a very enjoyable experience for me, and I would totally do this again. Um, so if this seems like something for you, it is free or cheap, depending on how much generous you want to be on a drive through RPG. I'll put a link in the show notes. And I hope that you enjoyed this experimental first-time play of Quill. Happy gaming.